Hi everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney and I'm so excited to be sharing with you a quest about hair. And this is a really special quest because we were given permission by the amazing hair artist Guy Tang to use his photos as reference for our learning. So let's send some happy love vibes out that direction. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. I'm gonna show you how to get better at painting hair. Yay! Hair quest! Let's look at our materials to see what we're gonna be using today in today's fabulous painting that focuses on hair. Now, I went ahead and put the image on canvas and just for the purposes of this, I did a grayscale study of her. If you would like to do that as well, you can and you're welcome to use the traceable if drawing is not your primary art skill. Of course, if you wanna just focus on hair, which is the purpose of this tutorial, you can just trace that part on and paint along with me. You're gonna come away from this knowing so much about hair. Over here, I have these colors and these are the ones I'm gonna to use to paint in this hair. I have titanium white, phthalo green, cad yellow medium, phthalo blue. I have primary magenta, you could use quinacridone magenta, and I have dog's eating purple. And I've got a little glazing medium here for blending. Now, in the Big Art Quest group on Facebook, I asked a lot of you guys to go ahead and do the mini quest where you took the traceable and did a grayscale study, at least in pencil, of our girl. And so many of you did that. And that really helped me understand what I'm gonna really focus on on today's tutorial to help you guys unlock the secret of painting hair. So one of the things I noticed is you guys did pretty great with form and pretty great with texture, but it was seeing the values and the undertones and highlights do you love how horrific that is? The undertones and highlights to really make your hair come to life. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on. Let's get started. I'm gonna pick one of my mid-sized brushes. This is a number eight bright. It has a synthetic filament and a nice spring. I'm gonna get it wet, take off the extra water, and I'm gonna start putting in the darker value on the hair. And so at the top of her hair, I'm gonna be using the dog's eating purple let me add a little of my glazing medium here to help me blend that out. And this is going to be my darkest value. So coming from here, I'm gonna pull this down. Pulling, pulling, pulling this down. Now in an effort to make this whole piece look really interesting, I'm actually not going to add any black into the hair part of the painting, and that'll make a nice pop between the background painting I did and this. So I'm gonna come down here very carefully around the area that I painted on the edge of my brush. Everything about this hair is going to be about catching the deep values the mid-tones and the highlights. I'm going to just pull this down. Notice how I'm making a little hair stroke here. I'm letting these edges be a little bit like that texture. That's something that you guys have really down is the directionality and the texture of the hair. That's all the lines you guys were drawing in your pencil drawings. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how to see the undervalues of the hair and then by layering up the colors, create the depth and flow of a much more realistic hair. So I have that here. I'm gonna bring some of this dark value around here and lighten and purple it out a little bit as I'm coming down here. So let's get a little more of our dogs in purple, our phthalo blue. Coming to the top up here. All right. I'm gonna add a little bit of this dark, dark here. A little bit at the top here. Here we go. Another place I know I'm gonna want this is here. Now I'm using Guy Tang's reference from Instagram. I have his permission to use this. He was a real sweetheart to let us use his hair photos as reference. But as a hair artist, when he takes these pictures, he actually makes sure all the information that I as an artist would need to paint a really good painting of hair. I'm gonna add a little bit of this up here at the top. Now around here, over here, I'm gonna come and add some of this as well. 
careful of not messing up my beautiful painting I did underneath of the Model Jennifer. It's a really beautiful girl. Also a mom, so I gotta love a mom who will pull some multicolored hair. I'm gonna take this down about this far. All right, now I'm gonna look for another place where I could put this. There's a couple areas here where this deeper, deeper value is. I'm gonna have to either work the corner of my brush or switch to a smaller brush, but I think I can get it with the corner. So I'm gonna come here in this section, right here. Just pull this here. And I saw another little value of it coming out here. We might even say some came here. See what we're doing? We're finding these deeper, deeper values. And that's what I'm going to have to do. This is, I'm laying in what's called an underpainting. Rinse that out, dry that off, and put that to the side. I'm going to find some other of my dark tones, but I'm going to do it with a slightly smaller brush so that I have a little more control over the space that I'm in. Let me find one that I like over here. Oh, here's a good one. So this is just a size down. This is just a six. And I'm thinking the rest of this I'm going to do in like a six or a four. So I'm going to pull out a little of this thalo and a little bit of my magenta because I'm going to want some of this to be more to the red as I'm coming down the hair. I don't know if you've ever, ever watched any of Guy Tang's videos, but I would highly recommend it if you can. Because you're gonna learn a lot about how these layers actually build up in hair for painting. It's sort of fascinating. Maybe a little more magenta here. I'm gonna really want the blue to be popping over the top of it. Let's see, we've got these two tones, but they're still very dark, right? This is the richness in the hair. I'm gonna bring this around here. And I'm, you know, keeping track of my reference. You'll have picture in picture in this. I cannot wait to see your finished pictures of hair. And again, if you want to do the gray study, the grayscale study of her face, you can totally do that. But if you want to just focus on the hair to practice the skill, believe it or not, paintings of just hair are actually quite beautiful. All right. So the pink was still coming like through here and down here. So I'm going to want to make sure that I've got that. But I'm going to get more red where I put that. I want to finish out this deep purple everywhere that I could have that. Let's take this down, this hair here. So this multicolored hair gives us an extra challenge over, say, somebody who's brunette or blonde or redhead. But the principles we're learning, and we're going to do a bunch of these to you guys are all hair aficionados. Like, till you guys are saying, oh, hair painting, so easy. Notice that I'm following the traceable. I'm coming in this section. I'm curling it around and down. A lot of this is going to be paying attention to what I'm seeing. Right? Let's uh, pull a little of this through here. See, I'm following the directionality of the hair. There's a little bit here. And there's a little bit here. Now, I painted my dark background in further than I needed it. And that's so that when I came back to add these little hairs, when I do the highlight textures, they can really go over into this background, creating an incredible finish. But this is just the work that needs to be done. All right, so now we have these values. And already you're kind of seeing, oh, like there's this value study that I'm doing. I'm going to wipe this off, but not pull all the pigment out. And I'm going to get some just magenta and let it pick up some of the purple that I have so I can come finish some of these colors out. Now, I don't want to take this all the way to the ends. Be 
because I know I've got to put my yellow there. I want to be sure that I'm being attentive to that, the values, the color, the low lights. So this is a bit like, you know, coming in and coloring, you know, on a coloring book here and pulling these values up, creating these layers. They'll make a difference later in a way that will just really surprise you. And I'm just looking for all the places that I need to put my pink down. Look at that. Pretty easy. Notice I'm also really stroking to the direction of the hair. This kind of hair color and this kind of hair painting, you know, of course will like make a gorgeous little time lapse for you, but it's one of those things that you really want to go through the process a couple of times. So this investment in yourself, in this time of learning the skill, it's going to pay out for you later. Just doing the pink here. Just making sure we've got that. All right, I'm going to rinse this out a little bit. I'm going to come back and hit a couple more bits of blue. Just some pure blue. Right, making sure that I've got my story, my my hair story, very clearly in my mind. And the other thing is, is I'm not trying to build up, just understand everything at once. I take small sections, and I just try to see this small section, and I look what is the what is the color that's underneath all the highlights. What's the value that I'm seeing? What's the hue? And start trying to look at those things. What's the saturation? Things to think about. Right? Don't feel like this has got to be perfect. This is about creating an overall story that you're going to come and expand on as you go. Right? You may, as you're going, go, oh, well, there's some pink here and we're going to be putting it in. But right now, we're just like, what is the story that we're telling? Every layer building up to enforce the story on top of it and beneath it, like a symphony. I'm stroking around. So be sure as you guys are doing this to be respectful, kind artists. You know, I really appreciated, you know, Guy Tang saying, yeah, you know, go ahead and use these for, you know, reference for your classes. So when you guys are out there sharing these, and I totally want to see your paintings, be sure and also tag him and make sure that, you know, you, you shout that out and say, this is from this artistry. This is from this studio so that people can find him. And if you are one of the blessed lucky people that get to go get your hair done there, you totally have to share a picture with me. That's a, that's a thing you have to do. But just remember to, to credit back and to say thank you and to enjoy this. All right, so we've got that coming here. I'm gonna rinse this out. I've got one of the tips that I wanna share with you right now is that I have uh, a lot of water because on any painting that's about it being very bright and saturated, as these colors get together, they mix, they gray each other out. Purple is the complement of yellow, so they can gray each other out. And that means that you wanna have lots of fresh water so there isn't pigment hidden in your brush or hidden in your water that's taking the saturation out of your beautiful, beautiful pigments. Now, I'm gonna come here and start putting in my yellows and my greens. And I'm actually going to use the green as my deep color and then come back with the yellow. You can even put a little blue in it to deepen it. See what I've done there? Let's start painting in the rest of this hair, the underpainting of this hair. We've got so much to do, but you've got to do these foundational pieces to build the rest of it. Even maybe pull this up here. Pulling this up here. 
blending them together. All right, so now you're starting to see that come together. This is a really brave color project that they took on and okay, I'm going to come here and I'm going to just make sure that I tell these in very delicate little stories. I'm using the edge of my brush. I'm going to come with much lighter colors but this is nice too to enforce that and there we go. Pulling that up here. This is a bit like a Zentangle or any kind of meditative painting you've ever done. This is going to be a lot of fun. And you're going to find if you complete it that you're very, very relaxed by the end of it. Just pulling this down. Letting this cross over into my gray, which I painted deep up into my hair. Right? So that I could come back later and put it back. All right, just following the hair I'm seeing. I'm covering the canvas because I know I've got so many layers. Isn't this interesting how when the green goes over the magenta it becomes purple? I love that. Also is going to make for a very nice result for us. So I'm just pulling that down. Even though I know there's layers and layers going over it, I know all these brush strokes reinforce, even in my brain, as I'm going. So already, you know, we're building up these colors on her, but we're telling our brain a story. Just pulling this through here. I might even take this up here just to make sure. There we go. Just curving this around. I love the way that hair falls like water. You might have read that in poetry. You might have thought that. As you're out in your life, look at hair. You know, look at all the different ways light hits hair. Think about how you might paint it. You know, definitely go by the Big Art Quest if you didn't get a chance to do the value study in pencil. Or you could do it in paint if you want. You know, but look at the hair from that black and white perspective. So you can start seeing these things before you add the challenge of color on top of it. We're almost through the whole underpainting. Okay. Just taking this mane around. I just can't even imagine how it would feel to have a head of hair like this. And you guys know I'm clearly inspired if you look at my hair. And I keep saying, where'd you learn how to do that? YouTube. YouTube. Though straight up, you know, I paid dues in the 80s for this kind of hair. There was a lot of Kool-Aid. A lot of manic panic in my life. So I'm just pulling this down. Just making sure that... These values are through all the hair before I start coming and putting the midtones, and then finally the highlights. And that's where it's all going to really, really, really come together. You know, I cannot wait to see pictures of your hair. And again, we'll do a few videos on the skill set so that you guys can learn how to do it. Because painting faces isn't just about features, it's about the whole story. And actually, when you're doing portraiture, it's the shadows and the hairline that are more meaningful to recognize who somebody is. So the reason I'm making such a big deal about hair is hair is a big deal in portraiture and in painting people. 
You're so identified fire hairlines. You just would be so surprised by it. So I'm just making sure my canvas is nice and covered, that I have a good value set. This is a good time to take an evaluation and change that water, get that water fresh for layer two. So once you have your fresh water, let's look around the head, look for anything that you need to touch up, fix or correct. You know, it's a good time to do that, to evaluate, stand back. Another good tip, take a picture with your phone, make it small, do those values work for you? That's another great way to look at it, to get out of your own head. Let's start putting in all these cool little mid-tones. This is really fun and I like this part. So this next part I'm gonna get into, so we're gonna say one of the mid-tones is say a little phthalo blue with a smidge of magenta. Look at that, I got some purple on my hand. <laughs> I'm gonna come into my white. Now this isn't my lightest highlight, so I wanna be sure that I'm not taking my lightest highlight up yet because that's where the secret sauce of this piece is going to be. And I'm gonna work the edge of my brush, okay? I want these brush strokes and the tones to be reflective of what I'm doing. So I've got this here. I can see this blue is here. I'm really looking at the piece. Where am I seeing the blue? Here we go, so I'm here in the middle of the hair. I'm not trying to paint every hair. I'm trying to paint all the colors and the values that I'm seeing. That's what I'm trying to do. Right? I don't want to paint every one. I just want to capture the flow. So you'll hear me say painting glass is like painting a rock, is like painting fog. And really what that is is that the same sort of things that I look for in a rock, I'm going to look for in hair. Where's the highlights? Where's the mid-tones? Where's the deep? That's what I'm looking for. So I'm coming here. Let me fix this over here just real fast because I got to know where I'm going. I'm going to just add that. Make sure I'm pulling that together. All right, it's starting to come in. It's amazing how fast it comes together when it does come together. So I'm pull this down. One of the other things that we did that's kind of similar to what you would, you know, do on hair if the hair was your canvas. And for these kinds of artists, believe you me, hair is their canvas, is that they started with a very blank slate by taking it down to white. And we took our canvas, we started with a white canvas to build up these colors to get this richness. So that's something we have in common. Notice I'm leaving these shadows, right? And the hair is starting to take its space. That's what we want, just a smidge of white. And I'm looking here very, very, very carefully at what I'm seeing. And that's important for me, important for you to use the reference reference and reference. And then also, of course, on the TS page, we have the reference material. So don't try to do it from your head. Look at what you're studying. Very blue, a little bit of white, but not my highlight. All right. And then this kind of comes down here. Just pay attention to what you're looking at. Do your best to study it and paint what you see. Just adding these strokes, trying to study what I'm seeing. Lifting this up a little bit to its mid-tone through here. Make my just blue if I need to. Like, oh, it's not blue enough. Come back, make it blue.
pulling at my white make my mid-tones. How far is this coming down? Not so white. So that's what I'm always adjusting, right? Bring this down on the edge of my brush, just trying to respect the values. There's some of this coming through here, so I definitely need to pull this through here on the edge. We're not trying to paint every single individual hair. Trying to paint the hair, the value of the hair. All right, where else do I feel like I've got some of this blue? I feel strongly that there's some of this blue right here coming underneath. Right there. And I see there's a pink and yellow lock and then here. Just looking for the for the value, the hue. Value is how dark it is. Hue is the um, color it is and the saturation. How rich is that color? Right, rinse, 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 rinse. Okay, so the next one I'm, I'm going to start working some of this down here and then I'm going to merge the pink over it. So I've got the blue, I'm going to come down into my yellow and green. Get a little of my green and yellow together because the green is pretty bright. Pretty bright green, right? And the yellow is so yellow. Just here, and you can even bring some of these hairs down. Might be between there. If you need to green it up a little bit, green it up. See how I'm doing? Come down through here. Need a little fluidity on my paint, so I've added some water. Just trying to pay attention to the picture as I'm recreating her hair story. Pulling this yellow up through here. I'm looking for each lock, each section, saying, what is that? How is that? Now there's some green that comes here, a little more green than that. There we go, pulling that through here. And like everything else in acrylic painting, a lot of this comes together in the highlights. It's that last 20% of the painting. Acrylic paintings go through a very challenging, unless you're painting like very expressively, um, kind of ugly stage and you've got to hang in and love your baby. Got to hang in and love your baby. Pulling this in here. Now let's come, oh I have some really wonderful green hair that comes up here. Let's tell some of that story. I'm going to add a little white to that even because there's a bit of a mint to it. I'm going to flick the brush up. There we go. Telling some of that story. Down here a little bit. 
screen. Oh, I love this part because it's just cascades of the hair curling back here. This girl had the best hair. Jennifer, I think her name is Jennifer, the model. And I like that she's mom with three kids because I can relate to that. <laughs> you know, I'm not a traditional mom or person. That's okay. I don't really need to be a traditional one. There's lots of wonderful traditional people out there holding the candles burning for that. So I'm perfectly happy to hold the non-traditional candle. Add a little hair here. Just pulling it through here. Just continuing the story, right? Telling this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous story. Love it, love it, love it. Rinse, 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 rinse. Let's come in here with a little bit of the yellow. I'm going to add a smidge of the white to it, but not too much. And you can even just give it a hint of the green. And let's come in, tell some of the story right here. Right? And there was some in his hair here. Just pulling that down here. I loved that there was a bit of this yellow, this bright yellow. It was such a color surprise, I felt, in the design of this. I'm going to come right here and so I think there's going to be some right here, right here. And there's going to be another nice little not fun. Telling the story. Let's get some right here. I'm going to add a little white. Sometimes with yellow, even really good yellows, you can have some coverage problems. So you may find that it's super important to add a little white or do a couple coats. Just do what you feel like you need to do. Get that done. Oh, how's that going? Every once in a while, check on your work. How's it going? Take that picture, look at it on your phone, make it small. Right. Come along here. Notice I made this little S stroke, this arabesque stroke. I'm going to say that there's a little bit of the yellow here. Now I'm going to see some here. Might come back over here. Wherever I feel like the yellow is just as it's drying, if it lets too much of the green show through, you want it to be in integrated there, but not where you're losing your story. So go back if you have to and pop that color. Feel like you can. Feel like you can. So I'm just so excited to be doing these. These are just some of the funnest, funnest references to work from. You know, when you, when you get inspired by another artist, and that can happen, or by something in life, you know, generally it's something that person or artist did that spoke to something really important, you know, in your personality. That really, you know, said something to you. I'm just looking for places where I feel like I'm seeing a little bit of this and I just want to flash that out. When that is there, I get to get into the pink and the pink is fun for me. So I'm going to pull out a little pink 
And in this case, I might even add a little yellow to it to warm it up. And I'm gonna get some white. But this isn't gonna be my lightest pink, so be sure not to over lighten it. And let's come in and start telling that little story. See, we're looking, looking, looking. Light brush pressure. I'm keeping my brush strokes very light and open. Just pulling this down here. If I need to offload my brush and reload, I do that. Just telling that story. Look how fun that is. Getting stronger with the pink down here. Around here. Let's tell that story coming around here. Some of this goes all the way up here, and what's nice is it's somewhat transparent, so as you lightly brush stroke it, you're getting some of that. See how that's starting to, to be like the hair, and it's starting to glow. Offload, load a bead. Some of this pink story is weaving, interestingly enough, through a little tendril of hair here. So let's tell some of it. And then it peaks again right here. And there's a little bit that comes here. Get a little of my pink on there. See, there's just the magenta and a little bit of the white. And then bring this around here. And then there's some beautiful edges to this hair. Because there's these incredible cascading layers that were created. So, you know, try to honor those. Try to represent those if you can. Get a little more of my magenta. Pulling this down here. Put a little more white on it. Okay, there you go. See? So this one was a little bit lighter, wasn't it? And the colors up top. This is still not our lightest of the pink, but we had to add a little more white to show these edges how they are. I think this had a little bit of that in it. I'm gonna add a little of this lighter white pink here. There we go. There we go. Starting to come together and we're nearly to the fiddly bits, which is the most fun. Fiddly bits on a painting like this is the most fun. And the trick about not being overwhelmed by hair, right, is going to be, all right, let's get some on here taking it one layer at a time. You know, this head of hair was like the entire day, so don't feel crazy if painting it takes a minute, right? Don't feel like stressed out, like you've got to think about it for a second. This original artist thought about it for quite a while, so we're just really honoring that legacy. And again, don't feel like you can't come in and add to the story or change elements for balance if you feel like that's necessary. Because maybe you will. Maybe you'll be looking at it and saying, I think it needs some of something different. I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of my pure magenta. I just wanna do a couple things. I'm gonna come under here with that pop of pure color and then a little bit right here, coming out here. So I'm just putting that value back where I feel like it would be a little bit. Because we can't lose the values 
that were making us excited about this in the first place. Just make sure I've got this here. And I'm just enforcing this color. So I don't want it grayed out. I want it to be quite special. So this is me just looking around. What can I do? All right. Now that I have that, I'm going to get my third glass of clean water. We're going to finish this up, and it's going to blow your mind what you can do. So let's finish with our highlights and then we'll get our fiddly bits in and we're going to be so like excited about what we did. All right, I've got a much smaller brush now that I just got wet. This is a number two bright and I'm going to come into my phthalo blue and I'm going to add a lot more white to it. A lot more white. All right, so we're making quite, quite a brighter, brighter Color. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to just, where I feel this highlight would be, I'm going to come and put it in. I'm going to be just delicate and easy about it. And again, don't feel like you've got to be a slave to what you're looking at, but be informed by it. Be inspired by it. Pay attention to what makes this special. What about her hair made it special? What about this girl was inspiring? And what about this artist's work spoke to you? And then that's what you're trying to capture. And that's what you're trying to be true to. Be respectful to it. Be respectful to it. Just making sure, look at that beautiful pop. See, there's those saturated colors. I'm going to also let some of my color exit a little bit the headspace here. And we're going to come back with little airy fairy hairs because people's heads are not helmets. Hair is not a helmet. And so you will have to, when you're trying to paint really beautiful hair, know that some of this has got to escape and fly away. All right. I love the Lisa Frank feel of these colors, the 1980s feel about these colors. They're just so intense. And again, as you share it, I hope you'll tag me, but I also hope you'll tag Guy and let him know how he inspired you. To be brave, not just in your hair, but maybe your painting. And we'll, if you guys like it, we'll do a few of these. They're really fun for me to show. Just trying to make sure that I'm, I'm going to come right here. Now I'm going to leave my darker color here as I pull the blue down. And the reason being is that, you know, hair falls in shadow, right? You've got to respect the shadows that hair can fall into. A little bit of this here. Just telling the story of her hair. This does look like a unicorn. Oh, I'm loving that. Checking my work in my camera. You're checking it at home in your phone, in your mirror. Someplace, just check it. Don't be critical, be observant. That's the trick. You know, you questers, that's one of the things I really want to challenge you to do 
is be observant of your work. Don't be critical of it. That won't help you. If I thought criticism would help, I definitely would use it. But it just doesn't in my experience. What helps is people who paint more. The more you paint, the better you're going to get at painting, especially when you're starting out. And that's why I really don't encourage criticism in this space because the only thing that really, really will set you free as a creative person is creating more stuff. You know, so the more you paint, the more you'll see. All right, putting a little line up here. See, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm following that space. I'm breaking those lines. You know, I'm going to come in and do some of my pink now. My white, my pink. Lots of white, though. So let's tell some of this story right here. Right, so this little soft pink. Just pulling a little of that, right? Just little soft hair lines. It gets a little lighter as it gets down here. Pink, 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 pink. There we go, right? What's happening right here? Could be a little light up into here. Just telling these little highlights. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Just tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. A little water, pull a little white out. Add a little pink to it. The thing is, I just want enough color to be moving. There we go. Just tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. Here we go. And here we go. There we go. Just following the flow following all of our art principles that we have, that we're familiar with. Right here, we're like, ooh. A little bit here. Just having a blast. Green, a lot of yellow, good bit of white. Make sure it's loaded on the edge of our brush. Here we go. There we go, just following this around. Don't take out all your shadows, but definitely, definitely find those highlights. You know, at this point, more than the reference, pay attention to the painting in front of you and honor what's happening there. We'll come back to the reference in a minute for some detailed information. But right now, you're just trying to say, what am I seeing? What am I seeing here? What am I layering? Just pulling that through there. Oh, here's one I'm really excited about doing. Let me get a little white. So this hair is going to come around, curl around here, and then flick back. I don't want to lose that. I definitely want that in there. Let me just 
talk about these edges here. See how lightly I'm talking about them, how I'm just painting them out. Are you starting to see hair in a different way now? I hope so. I hope, hope, hope that you're starting to see hair. I'm going to pull a little white out over here and a little of my yellow. Get my little ducky color going. Lots of coverage. Come back. And just tell the story on the edge here again. Let's tell that story. And you can do this. You've got this. You full on have this. Full on have this. Keep going. All right, pop that yellow right here. Oh, it's so nice. A little streak coming down here. Oh, telling that little story there. Oh, spectacular. Now just a couple little detail pieces, just a couple little areas of focus, not the whole thing, and then the whole thing will come into focus. So what I have here is a small round, okay? So what this is gonna give me a very, very nice precision point. I'm gonna get my brush wet, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna start with some of my blue and white right, just on the tip here. And I'm gonna tell just a couple small hair stories in her hair. Not a lot, guys. Not a lot, but a little bit. Don't forget to tell the little stories. Right. Don't forget to talk about the little flyaways that that don't get in line and don't want to listen to the hairspray. Right? Doesn't have to be all over, but you should have a few of them. Here and there. Should have a few of them. Here and there. All right, now I'm gonna do some of my green and yellow and white. Put a lot more white this time. Just make sure I've got a couple little flyaways. A little bit. Some stowaways across, across the divide. Some rebels.
Just cleaning my brush so I could reload the tip so I can get a nice flow. All right. Now that you've got your detail brush, I hope this study of unicorn hair by Guy Tang has helped you think about how you might be painting all of the hair in your portrait journey a little bit differently. I think we should sign this piece. Definitely, I'm certainly proud enough of it to sign it, so I'm going to go ahead and put my moniker on here. Be sure and share this with me. And if you put this out on social media, please definitely share it with me, but also tag guys so he knows how he's helped you out because I think he did this just to help us out. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and take on all those art challenges this week that you've been putting off a little bit. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.